Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing how much weight a spider can hold when it climbs up the wall and when it's on the ceiling. So first I'll be testing how much weight the spider can hold climbing up a regular household wall. And then I'm going to be seeing how much weight it can hold when it's actually on the ceiling. This is going to be awesome. So before we try to do this, let's talk about how a spider even stays on a wall. So spider legs are covered with tiny little microscopic hairs. And these hairs are somewhat sticky. It's kind of like a pressure glue, kind of like a sticky note. So if you push a sticky note on, it sticks there, but when you pull it off, the surface isn't sticky anymore. So it doesn't leave any of the glue behind. So spiders can climb up almost anything, even just a plain sheet of glass, they can climb up it with no problem. Because even smooth surfaces on a microscopic scale are still rough. And so those tiny little hairs of the spider can press up against all the little bumps and hold itself in place. But how does a spider ever unstick its legs once it sticks them to the wall? Because spiders running up a wall, as you've seen, can run really fast. Well, the key is the angle that their hairs hit the wall. So to show you what spiders do on a microscopic scale, let me show you how to do this in a doorway. So if I tried to just climb up this doorway, I couldn't do it. But I can do it if I press myself against the sides like this. Oh. See how I can hold myself up just fine? So basically that's what spiders are doing on a microscopic scale. So they press their legs apart from each other against the tiny little microscopic bumps on the wall. And because the hairs on their legs are a little bit sticky, it helps them stick even more to the wall. And then when they want to unstick from the wall, both of those legs pull towards each other and that unsticks them. Kind of like if I want to unstick from this wall, I just pull myself apart from both ends. So I caught this spider in my house about a week ago. I've actually been keeping him as a pet for about a week now. So he's going to be helping me with my test today. And after I do the test on him, I'm going to let him go, of course, back into the wild to eat the flies around my house. So this test will not be hurting the spider. I'm just going to be testing how much weight it can hold when it climbs up a wall. So I've used this type of spider in the past. I believe it's either a hobo spider or a wolf spider. I'm not quite sure. Hobo spiders are venomous, so I'm gonna be very careful with this. Hopefully it doesn't get away and bite me during this experiment. Okay, so all I've done now is tie a string to the spider. This isn't hurting the spider at all. This is right in between its abdomen. It's kind of like a little leash for it. So it will be able to handle its weight there just like when it hangs down from its web. Okay, so let's put him on a wall and see how much weight he can handle. So I'm gonna be putting little bits of this sticky stuff on the string as it climbs and we'll see how much it takes for it to finally fall off. And then I'll weigh this at the end and see how much weight it was able to carry on the wall before it fell off. Okay, first let's see how much the spider itself weighs. So 0.22 grams. So now let's see how much weight it can actually hold while it's climbing the wall. See if it can hold more than its own body weight. Okay, so I'm going to be using these sticky squares here. So one square, one square weighs 0.58 grams. Okay, so I'm gonna put them on in half square increments. So around 0.29 grams per little chunk that I'm gonna put on. So remember, each one of these weighs a little bit over the weight of the spider itself. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> spider on a string. <laughs> really big spider on a string. <laughs> this is so scary. Okay, let's put it on the wall. So we're gonna see how much it takes to actually pull the spider off of the wall. And don't worry, when it falls, it won't get hurt because its surface area to mass ratio is so big that it has a lot of wind resistance that slows it down and it won't get hurt. That's why insects don't get hurt when they fall. Okay, so these are split into squares. Let's see what happens when I put just a half on first. Oh. <laughs> softly lay it there whoa <laughs> look at it it can climb the wall pulling that up no way let's put on another one take off my gloves for this hopefully it doesn't bite me oh. 
Two of them. <laughs> no way. Okay, it's holding two of them so far. Okay, let's put another half on. Give it a rest. Okay, here we go. One, two, three of them. <laughs> oh, it's barely hanging on. It's still doing it though. Oh, look at it climbing up. That is so crazy. Look at it climbing with those three weights on it. That is so crazy. Okay, should we try another one? Okay, let's put another one on. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. No way! <laughs> Look at it just holding it on. That is so crazy. Look how it's doing that. Look at its legs, it's barely hanging on. That is so crazy. Look how much weight it's carrying. Oh, it fell. <laughs> so this is five times its own body weight. That's crazy. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine st can you imagine holding on to a straight vertical wall? Or even if you were a rock climber holding on to some rocks that had some pretty good bumps and you were able to hold five times your own body weight. That means for me, I'm around 150 pounds. That means that I could be sticking onto a wall and carry 750 pounds if I were a spider. That is insane. And for all the kilogram people, that's around 340 kilograms. Okay, now let's try it on the ceiling. Okay, now this one is more scary. I'm pretty sure it's gonna fall on me. So this should be more than its own body weight here. Oh, it's doing it. Whoa, man, it's having a hard time holding that. Let's try one other little one. Okay, let's try two of them. I think this is gonna be too much for it. No, it's got it. Holy cow, two of them completely upside down. Let's get another one. No way. Let's try three. Okay, one, two. Oh, it's losing it. Let's do it at three of them completely upside down. That is so crazy. Let's try four. Oh, it's losing it. Okay, here's four. I don't know if it can do this. This is how many it could hold on the wall itself. It's even lifting one of its legs off, so it's not getting its full strength. But it's implanted really good right there, so I'm gonna try it. One. Oh, it's gonna fall. There's three. Oh. Okay, so that wasn't very graceful. I think I pulled it a little bit when I was trying to put the fourth one on. So it could hold at least three for sure. Okay, the three weighed 0.86 pounds. So that's about four times its body weight that it could hold completely upside down. That is just amazing. I thought it'd be a lot less on the ceiling because it has the full force of gravity pulling it down. So that means again, for a 150 pound person stuck to the ceiling, that means they'd be able to hold 600 pounds, which is crazy. Okay, here we go. Let it go. OK, 
Okay, you're free, buddy. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And check out theactionlab.com to see my subscription box. In this box, I send you quarterly experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel. So head over to theactionlab.com to check that out. The first box that you'll get is a vacuum chamber box. So it's a mini vacuum chamber, which is really cool. You can do all the vacuum chamber experiments that you see me do. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.